Hey, it is uh, Wednesday morning, and um, I've decided to uh, get back to walking at the beach on a daily basis. Um, it is uh, important to kind of get out and walk. Um, my, I think it's called the hypothalamus or the hippocampus has been very active lately. The limbic system has been very active. And um, from what I've been reading, I have this great, this great book, um, Change Your Brain, Change Your, uh, Change Your Life. And uh, they talk about how when you're dealing with um, depression or anxiety, um, that it's an actually an active part of your brain that uh, is less active when you're in good spirits. Um, and one of the ways to overcome that is through exercise. Um, you know, it's been a long winter, um, and uh, I think that it's been, in, in a lot of ways, a wonderful winter. Um, but with the way news has been, you know, th with, with Jeremy's loss, with, uh, with, uh, with that news breaking on Monday, um, it's been a little bit rough. And I am not even a close friend of Jeremy's. Um, I just knew him through the project. Um, there's a lot of people that are really in pain right now up in Sandy Hook. And uh, I can't imagine what they're going through, considering how much he touched my life um, just, through, uh, just through this project alone. So, you know, I am struggling with how to continue writing the piece. Um, it's, I know it's going to continue. Um, but finding the message is, is change, it's changing. Um, you know, when I started out to write a piece about uh, gun violence, um, I wanted to be part of, I wanted to connect with people who, um, you know, who could speak to, um, speak to the topic, you know, and um, after finding the Aviel Foundation um, and, and then reading about Jeremy and his work with neuroscience um, and, um, the, you know, the effects of, um, like, how the brain can become violent and um, trying to find solutions to uh, violent behavior, um, I knew I found someone really special in Jeremy. And, um, I was really actually quite afraid to actually meet with any families from Sandy Hook because um, I was afraid I was going to ask the wrong question or say the wrong thing or, or you know, just, just feel guilty that, you know, my kids are still here um, and that I haven't been affected by it. Who am I to come into a situation and to write music about gun violence when, when it hasn't directly impacted me? I think that there's, there's a lot of anxiety going into, you know, to meeting with some, with, with a parent who, who's lost their child. Um, and I have to say that driving up to Sandy Hook back last March, actually one year ago today, um, it was, it was last March 27th that I met Jeremy and Nick, his, uh, one of the other work, one of the people that worked in the Abiel Foundation. And he was just so embracing and welcome and, and so much, I felt so much love from Jeremy sitting there for what well, was supposed to be a meeting, which maybe would be a half an hour to an hour. I think that he, he might've canceled some appointments, but he was there for the rest of the day with me. Uh, we were sitting and talking about everything. We were sitting and talking about, um, you know, I, I read The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama, um, and uh, he's, he's follow, he followed the Dalai Lama and, um, you know, and, and finding peace. Um, and, and he was so active in terms of um, finding peace and happiness within communities, finding an answer to, you know, um, finding an anecdote to violence. I think that Jeremy was so incredibly strong. Even to this day, you know, after the news broke, 
this Jeremy was so incredibly strong. I can't imagine how broken he felt losing his daughter. I can't imagine, and, and sometimes I go to that place and, 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 and I, I, I try to put myself in his, in his shoes and I, I can't, I, I can't. I think that's part of what made it so that I could take on this project is because when you go through something so incredibly sad and traumatic and devastating, um, there is no music, no matter how sad that music can be, there is no music, there's no music, there's no music whatsoever, you know? And there's been times when I've actually been in you know, that experience, not to this degree, but um, I've been through an experience where I say, someday I'm gonna write something about this, but, it's, but there's no music right now, it's just too devastating. So, meeting with Jeremy, really, um, he shared a lot with me, and um, I think that The Unarmed Child was, was written, you know, with Jeremy and his family, you know, um, in mind to, to honor them, to speak to people about their, their loss, their struggle after they lost Aviel in the Sandy Hook shooting. And now Jeremy is no longer with us. Jeremy took his life on Monday. And how do you speak through the music? How, how do you speak to the incredible sorrow and the incredible pain? Jeremy's wish was that the, uh, the song that's called to Aviel on her fifth, sixth birthday would speak to, to about Aviel's beauty, about her joy, you know, about her happiness. It would share with the world the beautiful person that Abigail was, while also acknowledging the struggle. I mean, it's called to Abigail on her fifth, sixth birthday because the family, Abigail's family, Jeremy and Jennifer, and the other kids that they have, um, would celebrate Abigail's birthday every year. You know, um, they would continue to after she died. So the song was to acknowledge, you know, to, to really share Aviel's beauty, which I think Chantel has done beautifully through the lyrics, and, um, and to also speak about their pain um, and their suffering. And now Jeremy's gone. And I really don't know how the song is supposed to go now. I don't know. There's nine songs surrounded by it. Some of those are angry, and I think those will probably be able to come out pretty well now. I think one of the songs that's gonna be particularly tough now that I've been working a lot on before this happened on Monday um, is, you know, where the mind is without fear. Because somebody as courageous and strong as Jeremy um, to be undone completely by losing his daughter, by this shooting, by his daughter being taken from him in such a violent way. And then to be undone by the response of this goddamn country and what we are, what we are doing and what we are not doing. Um, there's, I don't know where to go with the song. You know, when I said I'm gonna need help when I posted that on Monday with this, I mean, I'm gonna be fine overall. I can walk, I can see the ocean. I have a, a strong, strong wife who is just so, she's so strong. And she puts up with a lot of BS for me and maybe from the kids too. Don't tell them I said that. You know, so I, so I have, um, you know, I've been on a lot of journeys and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, I only, I only met Jeremy twice with long conversations. So even though I really cared for him, even though I felt this closeness to him, I still am not going through the trauma that his family is going through right now, that his kids are going through, that his wife is going through the re-trauma that Sandy Hook is going through. I'm not, you know, 
but the purpose of the song was to go there. The purpose of the unarmed child was to go there. And now I don't see just Aviel as the unarmed child. And, you know, to Adrian's piece, the kids in, you know, the kids in Chicago as the unarmed children. Um, I see Jeremy as the unarmed child. And so now it's personal, you know, it was personal once removed when Jeremy shared all the beauty of Aviel, you know, but now I'm seeing this beautiful man, this beautiful father, one year older than me, with a child that was practically the same age as my children. And he couldn't take the pain anymore. And he was doing everything in his, he was doing everything that he could do to survive. It, I, I thought he was, <laughs> he was doing everything he, he could do to find answers to why, why was his daughter taken? Find solutions. He was so proactive and so, so positive. And what he has created in the Abigail Foundation is beautiful. And I'm so glad they're going to go on and continue his work because it is so incredibly important. It is so peaceful, it is so positive. But underneath all of that must have been this unworldly pain that he was going through. And he decided he couldn't take it anymore. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how the song goes on. I have to figure out what the message is. And I keep reminding myself, and maybe you could help me with this, anybody that's watching this, but maybe um, I have to think about the fact that there are many, many other parents out there that are going on, whose lives are changed forever. And maybe that's, that's who this song is for. And it's, maybe it's enough of a, maybe it's enough for in some way to help us take action as a country. I don't know. There's a lot of other people that are doing very, very much more powerful, important things than this song. But um, I'm hoping that at least it's, it's, it's something, <laughs> it's something that people can, can connect to. But I have to find the voice again. So anyway, so that's where I'm at right now with the unarmed child. Um, I think that uh, we have some healing to do. And I guess for now, all I can do is walk. It's a beautiful day, it's cold, um, but it's a beautiful sunny day. And right across the Long Island Sound over there is um, where Jeremy's family lives. So, I feel very, very lucky that I can actually finish this video, get up from the seat, and, and walk along this path today. So, um, happy Wednesday. I always say that as I finish these videos, it feels kind of weird to talk about that today. But um, I think that uh, we all have to go on, right? And that's what I'm going to do.